Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back with the story of Ark. In this little mini-series we're going over all of the original survivors from the island map and covering all of their explorer notes in a complete format. In this episode we're going over Mi Ying's notes and if you missed the previous episode, check that out before carrying on with this one. So gather around, sit back and relax and enjoy part 2 of Mei Yin's story across the island map. A woman named Helena arrived at my camp yesterday, though not to hire me. She said she was a scholar studying creatures on the island and she wanted to observe my beasts. I turned her away at first, not trusting her intentions. How could I? What mad fool would bother with scholarly pursuits in a place like this? Yet she persisted and in time I was convinced of her honesty. I do not know if I've made the right decision. Helena is constantly asking strange questions. Why does she need to know so much about my beasts, feces and mating behaviour? What a bizarre person. When Helena arrived I was constantly glancing in her direction, wondering just what she was scribbling in that thick book of hers. Now I hardly notice her unless we're speaking. The questions haven't stopped, but thankfully they aren't always about things like animal feces. Sometimes we just talk about something simple, like cooking. Neither of us are very good at it. But together we've managed to make a few things that taste better than just plain meat. Yet before long, my territory will be silent once more. Helena says she has to move on, and war is brewing in the south. Someone will need my sword very soon. The war in the south is not an ordinary one. According to a member of the Painted Sharks that arrived to hire me, this tribe is fighting the new legion. I admit, that gave me pause. They were formidable before, and now they've grown even stronger since we last met. Yet I have grown stronger too, and the sharks were clearly in desperate straits. I could not turn them away. As I readied for war, I recalled a dream I had many months ago. I still don't believe in fate, but maybe this is my nature. On this island, maybe I can actually be like Lieutenant Guan. My beasts are precisely what the sharks lacked. Most of their material strength lies at sea. On land, they lacked a unit with the ferocity of a true vanguard. Without that, they could merely withstand the Legion's siege, not break it. That changed when my beasts crashed into the Legion's rear like a great wave. I can still hear the cheers as the Legion fled. I can feel the echo of the emotion that swelled in my chest. If I could return home, I imagine that this is what it would feel like. I won't dare forget it. Sometimes I fear I've grown fangs or horns without noticing. What else can explain the way others look at me? In battle the sharks cheer me, but afterwards we rarely speak. I camp separately and I'm only summoned when it's time to discuss strategy. I do not understand. Trust is rare on this island. I know that, but have I not bled in their defence? Have my beasts not died fighting their battles? Perhaps it's just the strain of war. We're in Legion territory now taking the battle to them. Soon the war will be won. Surely then the sharks will not fear me. When anger rises, think of the consequences. I know this by heart, yet I cannot help but seethe with fury. Even Wu Shui is keeping his distance. Last night, I awoke by the sound of thunder coming from the shark's main camp. I rushed to their aid, but blinded by the night and consumed with panic, they attacked my pack. By the time order was restored, we'd both sustained losses. Clearly this was the work of the enemy, but these fools blame me for the confusion. Some even claim I torched their camp. How dare they question my honour after all I've done. Cowards, they have no right. I should have foreseen this. Though I put my pride aside, those audacious sharks could not. At their behest I began the long trek back to my own territory this morning. They say they will finish the war without me. Doubtful. Without my pack at the van. The new legion will surely smash them to pieces. But what can I do? I cannot protect them if they don't want my protection. Will the legion come for me afterwards? I cannot say. But if they do, I know that I will receive no aid. I must rely on my own strength. And right now I fear it is insufficient. I need to become stronger. I need the demon king. He is mine. After a mighty struggle, the power of the Demon King is now mine to unleash. The cost was almost too great. I bought only my swiftest beasts on the hunt, hoping to run him in circles. 
but even still he managed to kill many of them. Were it not for Wu Shui, he may have killed me as well. But my Wu Shui is both swift and cunning. He knew exactly what distance to maintain and exactly when to retreat. No steed could prove more true. Tomorrow I must begin acclimating the Demon King to life in my pack, but for tonight I will allow myself to celebrate. I was wise to test the Demon King's hunting skills from atop of one of my flying beasts. When he stumbled down a rock formation, his eyes glowed with that familiar hatred and suddenly he proved deaf to my commands. In time, he calmed down and obeyed me once more, but it was a fearsome thing to witness. I think I will keep him apart from the other beasts. Not only will it keep them safe, but it will calm their nerves. They have been tense since his arrival. I cannot blame him. The Demon King's power could save us or doom us. I must use him with extreme care. Am I making a mistake? Maybe. The closer the great pillar of light gets on the horizon, the more my concern grows. It's a gamble, no question. Helena said she did not know if this pillar of light would behave like the other one. Yet if it does, if we are transported to some other plane to battle a monster for a mysterious key, then there's a chance that this could be the first step on the path home. If not, then at least a path away from this island and the new legion. Technically, Helena has hired me, but that small chance is payment enough. It's worth the risk. I hope I am prepared. Had I let fear rule me and left the Demon King behind, then Helena and I would be dead. Only with his strength were we able to defeat the gigantic ape. His rage cost some of my pack their lives in the aftermath, but that was the price of victory, the price of hope. The key we were rewarded with matches the one Helena already had. That means the third pillar must lead to a third key, and when combined, what then? It's uncertain, but if each pillar takes us somewhere, then maybe their combined power can take us anywhere. Maybe it can take us home. Damn those new legion cowards. At full strength, I could have fended them off, but they attacked just when we returned from the pillar of light. What beasts I had were exhausted, and the demon king flew into a rage before I could start a retreat. When that happened, all hope was lost. The last thing I remember was a sharp pain in my side. When I woke, I was alone with Wu Shui. Both of us were covered in blood, but Wu Shui's wounds were deeper. I cannot fathom how he carried me to safety in such a state. I must find a place to hide. Wu Shui and I are alone now and barely clinging to hope. My dearest friend has gone. To his last, he was magnificent. The creatures that attacked us were larger and with his wounds, they were even faster. But no beast could ever match Wu Shui in spirit. I buried him where he fell, saving me one last time. I was unworthy of such a loyal friend, but I will avenge him. His true murderers will pay. Not the beasts, but the new legion. They are responsible. I swear by the souls of my ancestors that I will find their leader and drive a blade through his heart. In Wu Shui's name I will take his head. As I thought, the legion was at the Pillar of Light. I sighted them as they departed, and I've been following them since. They have too many for me to fight head on. If they spot me, I will be killed, but I know how to hide from sight and mask my scent from their beasts. It did not take long to discern which was their leader. No one else walks with his pride, or gestures with his authority. I could probably have hit him with an arrow by now, but I want him to see my face. I want him to know that the Beast Queen vanquished him. I soon regretted freeing Helena from her cage before following the legion through the portal they opened. She was too focused on the wonders around us. When she saw that most of the legion was dead, she even tried to dissuade me from killing their leader. I knocked her unconscious. I wish her no harm, but I cannot let her interfere. At least she told me his name. Nerva. That's the man I will kill here, on this fitting stage. I admit, it is beautiful. The stars shine so clearly. I can think of no better place for my vengeance. Here. At the edge of heaven, let our battle finally be decided. I suspect Nerva knew that he would not fare well in battle. After taking a couple of blows from my sword, he dashed off into the darkness. However, I know he was deeply wounded. His blood cannot lie. I suspect this command center was created by something with technology far beyond most normal comprehension. In the distance, I can see several worlds, one that's clearly the place I've been. I am now sure that there are more of these worlds. 
That scoundrel Nerva must have escaped before he could meet his death. Little does he know, I won't give up that easily. I will find him in whatever realm he travels to. There is a terminal that sits upon a platform near the end of the command center. Surely, through some combination of codes, that must unlock travel to other worlds. But it does not. It only adds another foe to be slain by the Beast Queen. And that concludes Mei Yin's Explorer Notes from across the island map. In the next episode of The Story of Ark, we'll be going over Gaius Marcellus Nerva, a Roman centurion who wrote all of his notes in Latin. Again, I'll be using the translator to read through the notes, and we'll finish off the complete series with our last survivor. Don't forget to comment down below if you enjoyed this episode and your thoughts on Mei Yin. Subscribe if you're new here for more art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.